there's no one watching, so I'm just kind of waiting for people to come in. Come on. Well, there's one person. Hello. Hey. It's uh, really sunny and warm out here today. We'll just wait for a couple minutes for people to come in before I start. Um, don't look behind me. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? You should be able to hear me. Okay, so you can hear me. 10 people watching. <clears throat> now you're looking. <laughs> it is, um, we are going to uh, summer over here. It's, uh, it's still springtime, but today it has really warmed up. Um, it's right at the very moment, it's about 27 degrees, which is uh, quite hot for um, this Canadian. But yeah, it's really beautiful around here. So, hello everyone. Um, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon here in Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to this uh, special live stream event. Um, today is a special day for me. So I thought I would like to share it with everyone else, um, all my followers. Um, as many of you already know, um, I've actually I actually grew up in this area, in Melbourne, Australia. I spent my teenage years uh, over here. I uh, spent about eight years down here. <clears throat> and that was 30 years ago. And 25 years ago, I moved, um, my family moved to Canada. So I followed along. So, um, and I haven't been back since until uh, this past week. Okay, so you can hear me now. So, yeah. Um, I planned this trip for quite a long time now. I've been wanting to come back and uh, to see my friends, but just haven't been able to do so. Life got in the way. But now I've been back. Um, so yeah, so it's been great. This is um, where I'm sitting at. This is Curve Road Pier in South Melbourne Beach. And if you look on behind me over there, uh, that's Port Melbourne. And uh, the city of Melbourne is just in the background over there. So, it's, uh, it's, this is Port Phillip Bay, by the way. We, we're inside a big bay uh, just outside of Melbourne. So, it's, uh, it's quite nice. You can see it's really bright. Really bright and really sunny. Really beautiful, really warm. Don't expect me to jump in, so I can't even see the bottom. Really enjoying my stay right now. <laughs> but yeah, um, so back to what I was saying. Um, I'm only here until next Wednesday, so I have another week. Yeah, thanks to my wife, Nina, uh, who's looking after the kids, allowing me to do this. Um, really grateful for that. As I said earlier, this is Curve Rope here. This is where um, I've actually spent many days, hundreds of days of my days fishing as a kid. And if you've started out fishing when you were little, um, you, you would know what I'm talking about. This is kind of like my safe place. I've learned how to fish over here. Uh, growing up, I've had many fishing buddies hanging out in the summertime. I would spend days on this pier fishing every day um, with them, uh, creating lots of memories. So this is a like I said, this is a rather special day for me to come back um, here to revisit the area. I brought my fishing rod, um, but fishing is not really the main objective today. But I really wanted to come back and uh, it is the people who I want to see. Um, we are not really in the right uh, fishing season, um, being the early springtime. The fishing hasn't really picked up yet in the inshore waters. Um, but. I'll make a few casts and see what happens later on. And if we do get something, I brought my camera as well and we'll be filming that. Um, hey, let me uh, turn this camera around and show you guys the water down here. And it is 
quite um, different to what we have back home. The water is really clear. This is roughly around, I would say, I don't know, eight feet? No, maybe more, I would say about 10 feet. And you can see right through to the bottom um, over here. And look in the background, this is clear sky, beautiful. Really calm today, jumping. Um, I don't think I'll be jumping in. Um, well, first of all, I don't swim very well. Don't tell anyone that. <laughs> um, and I don't think, well, people are swimming over there. So I assume the water is not super cold. Um, yeah, on the way here, it was actually, I was melting. Tomorrow, today's only in the mid 20s Celsius. Tomorrow's supposed to be 31. Uh, so that's gonna be quite warm. Well, yeah, uh, back to the fishing. So this pier, like I say, I've spent, you know, about six years of my life during my teenage years fishing here. And we were getting to tons of different species. One good thing about fishing in Australia is that you, the diversity of fish species is unreal um, compared to the uh, compared to North America, compared to Canada, anyways. Um, I love the salmon, I love the um, trout, steelhead, but um, fishing over here has been really memorable. Um, being able to catch trevallis, snappers, King George whiting, garfish, mullet. Um, flounders, stingrays, the list just goes on. It is, we got into, you know, dozens of species um, throughout the year on this pier. So, so yeah, you can see people are really enjoying themselves on the pier. Um, anyways, like I said, I'm, I'm only going to be here for another week. Um, I have about 10 days uh, down here, but hopefully I'll be back here um, in the near future. Uh, fishing is not really the objective for this trip. Um, I've been uh, hanging out around the city for quite a while, just seeing the changes. After ha not having been back for 25 years, this is completely different to what I had expected. Um, I knew it was going to be different, but um, this is... I'm kind of blown away by how much the city has changed. It's almost like time traveling uh, after not being back for 25 years. Um, I totally don't recognize anything anymore, um, but it's been fun. It's become, the city has become more multicultural. And uh, yeah, compared to when I was here, when I was here, I was kind of like the, the visible minority being Chinese, but now it's totally different. Um, and it's, it's great that it's kind of, celebrated finally so um back to about the videos um i do have quite a few videos coming out once i get home um i'm, I'm kind of just putting work aside for a little bit not even thinking about it um <clears throat> i had about 10 episodes lined up uh filmed just ready to be edited and they're gonna be going out as soon as i get home we'll start rolling them out in the next couple months so that'll be that'll be really good um i have one really uh, really exciting saltwater salmon fishing episode that I'll be showing you guys. Um, there's a couple of rainbow trout lake uh, rainbow trout fishing videos going out as well, and uh, and I think well Nina, Nina and I actually talked about this. I think we're going to be doing some um, uh, possibly another co fishing video or chum salmon fishing video because the season's not over yet. Uh, we had we still have really good fishing for another four or five weeks, so I'm hoping to take advantage of that uh, once I get home. So. Um, yeah, anyways, do you guys like the view? <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying myself over here. You can, I can sit here all day without fishing, really. Um, but we are going to go make a few casts eventually. So, um, my battery's good. Well, on the iPhone will run out uh, pretty fast. So I, I won't do this live stream for too long. And, uh, I won't drag this on for too long. So, you guys have any questions? I've heard about the rain back home, which uh, I'm kind of glad I'm missing out on that. Um, the weather over here, like I said, is being nice. Up until yesterday, it's been in the high teens Celsius, uh, low 20s, and I thought that was beautiful. Everyone else thought it was really cold. I thought it's been, I was, that's like a, a typical summer day in Vancouver. So it's been great. 
uh, the next couple of days going to warm up really fast. Today, I was almost struggling a little bit walking around uh, town. Uh, in the, the temperatures in mid 20s, and tomorrow is going to be low 30s. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I was going to go fishing tomorrow, but uh, now I'm thinking I'm going to hide in the house away from the heat. But who knows? Um, so someone asked about the cold fishing season. Um, yes, the the cold fishing season should be on until the end of November. Not necessarily the Chilliwack Vitreo system. Um, it's usually good until mid November. But as we get into late in the season, uh, we're going to move, be moving onto other systems as well, where you do have a late coho run in those rivers. Um, we have great chum salmon fishing coming up as well. Um, so the only thing to watch out for is we. This chum salmon retention closures for many rivers, you can't keep them because we're expecting low returns into those streams this year. And uh, chum salmon, as many of you know, it's very important to uh, watersheds. They provide so much nutrients uh, for all the other salmon species once they die, uh, so we really need them. Um, the the escapement goal, the, the number of fish that we need to count to have it back to the spawning ground for the lower Fraser tributaries, it's 800,000. But we're not going to get anywhere close to that, unfortunately, this year. It's probably going to be around 500,000. So, um, so it's a little, little troubling. And that's why they're having closures this year to make sure we get as many fish as we can back to the spawning ground. So, anyways, um, enough salmon talk. Um, okay, steelhead. So, steelhead fishing season typically starts around mid December in on the Vedder. You can catch them. You can get into the odd ones as early as uh, November, but usually mid-December is a good time to start. So, yeah, I missed the other question. The chat kind of pops up a little bit and then it kind of disappears right away. So I, I can't read it. Um, I can't, I'll, I'll miss it right away if, um, after a few seconds. Uh, what is my favorite country to fishing? Um, to be honest, I love to be fishing here uh, simply because I've had so much so many great fishing memories over here. Um, if I had the choice, I would love to spend several weeks to be fishing in this area. Um, this is the type of fishing that I really love. I love my salmon fishing, don't get me wrong, but um, but this is really great. Being able to, to fish in this warm weather, in warm water, um, it's uh, I, I really miss it. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna get to do much of that uh, this time. So, but yeah, um, over there, actually over there, it's Port Melbourne. You can see the big um, ferry, cruise ferry on the background. Um, that's actually where I started fishing in Melbourne. Um, I've always fished since I was a little kid, since I was five years old. So when I moved up here at the, the age of 11, 10, 11, um, I wanted to get into fishing. So I actually went out, explored, uh, to fish on my own. So the very first time I fished was actually on that big uh, dock over there and not knowing what I was going to catch I basically fished, uh, dropped my line down to the bottom um, in front of me fishing with prongs and uh, got into a couple of fish right away and I was shocked how big the fish were and how hard they were pulling. It turned out to be two, I had two silver trevallis on the line and they were roughly about a pound to two pounds each and they were to to a ten year old kid they were massive and they're, they're, and that got me hooked right away um, so yeah so that's uh and and from there you know I fished there like I said I fished there quite a bit um, started catching garfish started catching mullet um, it's eventually I found this pier over here, curve rope pier, and fish over here. Gary, I actually had a very strong Australian accent when I lived here. Um, when I moved to Canada, the very first couple of years I, I had it, and people were, were kind of, you know, baffled by why I had it was an Australian accent. Um, but eventually it just faded away um, after meeting Nina, um, you know, having a Danish wife doesn't help and being around Canadians all the time um, <clears throat> it was it was gonna go away eventually so um, it's kind of neat how um, your language kind of change changes over the t over time um, when you when you move to a different place so
Any other questions? Um, we've been doing this for 15 minutes now. Um, I'm not gonna be doing this for too long because my I want to save my phone battery. So, but I thought you know I, I should come in and do a little live stream for my YouTube channel while over here. Um, do I tie my own flies? No, I don't. I used to, but I don't anymore. Um, simply because I don't have time. Um, I spend as much time as I can fishing, um, but family and work really takes up most of the time, so I have to cut back on a lot of hobbies. Uh, jet lag. No, I actually um, haven't been jet lag, surprisingly. So the, the, the journey here took pretty long. Um, I lived at midnight in Vancouver, and I arrived here uh, in Sydney, Australia, at 10, 11 o'clock, well actually no, 9 o'clock in the morning and then it was a layover then I got on the second flight um, to Melbourne so by the time I got to my friend's house yeah, it was actually 26 hours after uh, I left my own house so that took a long time but still, that's still not very long if you think about it, how far away I am um, it's a uh, it's it's pretty sweet. Um, so back to jet lag. It, it, has, it actually hasn't been very bad. Um, you know, once I go here to Melbourne in mid to late afternoon, um, I hadn't slept for like over thirty hours by that time. Um, so I managed to stay awake uh, for six more hours. Went to bed at ten o'clock in the evening time over here, and slept right through to the morning, and I was fine. I think. The reason the jet lag hasn't been that bad is that um, the time difference is 18 hours, it's quite big. It's almost 24, so there is, almost isn't a difference. Whereas when we go to Europe, um, the time difference is about 9 hours. Uh, so when you have that 12 hour difference, the opposite, um, it becomes really hard to, uh, to kind of get over the jet lag. So. So now it's been fine. And also just the fact that I'm pretty excited to be here and it's sunny and that really helps when it comes to jet lag. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been great um, right away. So I was worried about jet lag. On the way back home though, it's gonna be tough. Um, I leave here 10 o'clock in the morning and I arrive seven o'clock in the morning Vancouver time. So I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna be like, I'm getting a day back, but I'm kind of going back you know what I mean? Like, so I'm losing a night of sleep once I get to Vancouver. So that's gonna be tough. Um, I know, I'm, I know, I, I will be quite jet lagged by the time I get home. So hopefully there'll be some fishing I can do early in the morning. I can just go down there. Um, yeah. Anyways. Um, so speaking of time traveling, someone mentioned time traveling. Like I say, um, after not being here for 25 years, this has been quite a shock for me, uh, a good shock. It's been very different. Um, oops. I missed your message there, Gary. I can't, for some reason, YouTube just, um, the, the message disappears um, right away. Right, so I can't, I can't, uh, I can't see it. Something about accommodation. Ask me on the private message so I can, I can help you out. So anyways, uh, let me show you guys one more time. What it looks like around me. Beautiful blue sea, blue sky, and uh, I got a travel rod. It's a three piece G Loomis travel rod that I'm a spinning rod I, I got, uh, seven feet long. Um, usually people do use uh, longer rods around here, but that's, that's all I can carry onto the plane uh, this time. So that would do. So what I plan to do is actually, I'm just gonna cast and retrieve some lures, and hopefully there'll be some Australian salmon around. It's they're not anywhere close to like our oh, um, Pacific salmon, um, but um, it's more of a perch, sea perch family. We call Australian salmon over here. Uh, spawn sacks for coho. Yes, they do work. I personally, I, it's not my preference. I've used it before. I've caught fish with them. Uh, I've caught coho with them before, um, but my preference is definitely using chunks of roe 
for cold salmon. But if you don't like the mess, uh, XX is definitely a good option to go with. So, yeah. Show you the water again. Without really dropping my phone down here. I remember when I was a little kid, um, I used to be able to spot flounders down in this water. And you can actually see them chasing the jigs um, here. Maybe I'll try that in a little bit too. It's quite fun. See how clear the water is? It's beautiful. That water is roughly around, like I say, it's about 10 feet deep. And you can see right through it. Loving it. Um, but yeah. Canada's number one fishing channel. I wouldn't go that far. There's quite a few other good channels um, around. Have I ever caught any barramundi? No, I never caught a barramundi. Um, barramundis are from northern Australia, so we don't have them down this way. I've been told fishing around Darwin is really good. If you, if I had to choose, I should go up to Darwin apparently. So maybe one day we'll do that. Um, spear fishing, yes. So when, when I was fishing over here 25, 30 years ago, uh, we did do a little bit of spear fishing for flathead and stuff. Um, so that was fun. Yeah. So, anyways, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I, I, I'm glad that I could share this with you guys. Um, Am I, oh sorry, okay, so question's coming in now, it's gonna end it. Um, am I gonna fish with April? We've talked about it, um, but simply I don't have the time to do that for this trip. Um, the, yeah, so, so April's actually up in Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm down in Melbourne right now. So I just time constraint, I don't have time to do that. Um, someone asked about um, the background story of where, where I came from. Originally, I grew up in Taiwan. Um, I spent about 10 years of my, the, the first 10 years of my life in Taiwan before moving to Australia. Uh, I spent my teenage years here. Um, then after that, uh, it's a bit of a long story. Um, we, were, we were gonna immigrate to this country, but that never worked out. But then we tried Canada. Um, once I finished high school, um, that was approved and we moved to Vancouver, Canada. It's been there ever since. So. So that's the story. Anyways. Um, you are Taiwanese, Tessa. Okay. I, I gotta come up and fish with you then one day. I, I would love to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the story. Um, but I say it's a, you know, now that I've traveled quite a bit, it is a very tiny world being around. There's so many, um, I was mentioning earlier that back when I was here, I was visibly, you know, one of the few Chinese around, um, Taiwanese around, and, but now it's, it's, you know, Chinese is everywhere. You can see it's very visible on the street. Um, every, every two stores in downtown Melbourne, in the city of Melbourne, um, it's it's a either a Chinese restaurant, Taiwanese restaurant, Vietnamese. Um, it's it's very multicultural now compared to when I was here, so it's a bit of a shock. Uh, Gary mentioned about going to Taiwan, uh, so I am going to Taiwan and bring my family to Taiwan um, in during spring break in March uh, next year, and I'll, that's going to be my first time going back in 30 years. I believe. Actually, no, not 30 years. Uh, 29 years. So, so that's going to be a very special trip as well. Um, anyways, there's people walking by. I uh, we we we've talked about hunting. Uh, so within my group, we talk about doing about hunting. I've never hunted before. And we talk about making 
hunting videos in a sense that to document um, my experience of starting out and learning about it um, maybe one day um, for now it's simply again time just don't have the time to do that yet um, maybe once the kids get a little older we will start doing that so um, yeah how old am, am I uh, 43 <laughs> Oh, I, I, I can speak um, and understand Taiwan, uh, Mandarin Chinese and Taiwanese. I can read fairly, fairly well, um, but I can't write very well anymore. So um, it, is, it is the language that I use with my parents. So it'll be interesting. After 30 years, uh, not being back to Taiwan, it'd be, it'd be an interesting trip. I know that. Just like this one. I mean, this one has been a bit of a shock, way more than I expected. Um, so I can't imagine what Taiwan is going to be like. So yeah, okay. Anyways, I think I've talked em enough. Um, I don't say enough questions. Like I say, I have quite a few other videos come out coming out uh, once uh, I get home. Um, in the meantime, if you guys have any other questions, uh, message me. I'm always happy to answer them. Thank you for tuning in and supporting the channel. And uh, until next time, good luck fishing. How do I turn this off? I can't, like... <laughs> Why is it not turning off? <laughs> I guess I'm not saying goodbye yet because I can't turn this off. <laughs> oh, here we go. I got it. Have a good night, guys.